Hello, I'm Todd Hagenboo with Arbor Chem Products. The video today that I'm going to talk about uh, is spraying around agricultural fields when doing power lines. Obviously, throughout the eastern United States or anywhere in that country, for that matter, there's, there's vegetation that is non-target vegetation next to the right-of-way. We want to be very careful not to do damage to those areas uh, where that can result in a claim or other issues. It's important to utilize things like drift control agents in this type of scenario. As you can see behind us, the soybean fields, and then there's little pods of brush here. Albeit it's not a power line, we can mimic a power line here. Got a the cluster of Atlantis on your left side here, and then we got various brush species over here in this little island. And I'm going to demonstrate how you can apply herbicides around these areas without causing damage to the agricultural field. If the wind speeds were up anything over five to eight miles an hour, I probably would not treat in these areas. But if you can add drift control, like control at one to two ounces per 100, 100 gallons of water, we can really reduce that drift and you can potentially do high volume applications next to agricultural fields like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate how that's done. And uh, other options you might use in an area like this would be basal applications or hack and squirt or uh, cut and treating the stump uh, to avoid any off target damage. Always, I always have my back away from the desirable vegetation when I'm applying to make sure there's no uh, spray heading towards those desirable things. <coughs> side and then I'm coming around to the other side to make sure I get two sides of the target or otherwise you only have half control on these plants so I hit it from that side now I'm going to hit it from this side as well if this was the right away edge I'm going to try to spray as parallel with the right away as I possibly can to avoid any off target damage on the border of the right away the trees get this tall you have the ability to put a little more pressure under it and shoot up into the tops if we need to uh, obviously, it's trying to stay parallel with the right away again and trying to avoid any off target damage into the field. So, this can be done. It's just a little, uh, takes a little patience and a little bit of uh, pre planning about how you're going to make the application. Alright, I'm going to go down here and try this little island. <coughs> mulberry I'm hitting here. Again, I'm hitting this side of the plant, getting coverage, and obviously I'm going to need to go to the other side as well. Because the field is out here, I'm making sure I'm spraying away from the field as much as possible. So I'm going to hit it from this side. On target. That little pink right here. Well, we got a bigger one here, so I'm going to make sure we're we'll, we'll stretching on people's face. Keeping my pressure fairly low because I don't want any to create any fine mist that could come off site and do damage to anything. Yeah, that's as far as I'm going to go on this side of the tree before I come around the other side and make sure I don't go towards the field. Still an 
before I get those top shoots, <laughs> I need to straighten my stream out a bit and make sure I'm getting over those. Get down here, I can do more of this. This is a very large tree. This is not typically the size we're going to be high volume spraying, but it was a good example of trying to keep our mist from going in the right of way. You can always coarsen up your pattern a little bit if you need to. So I'm going to go one more side of this tree to make sure I got everything. <laughs> Typically, when you try to get as close as you can to these targets, I happen to be in a jungle of uh, Japanese honeysuckle vines here, so that's fairly close. And now what I'll do is I'll go out and I'll come around, and I'll make sure I get them from the other side. Okay. 